Well, let me hint take a month outside. You don't have any man. We have not done an outside little chit chat in a long while. I would show you how it's looking these days. However, comma, they have street names over here now because the houses are getting built. So we're gonna just refrain from that. It's not yet golden hour, but I did want to catch you up on life um since the recording of the video which was two days ago <laughs> um i sat in my room like in a really dark funk for all of yesterday like really bad it was pretty bad um then i woke up this morning and realized that number one like for lenny um, she's no longer in pain. I'm gonna mourn her. I'm gonna be feeling sad without her, but at least I know she's not in pain anymore. Um, as for the situation with my friend, um, we haven't talked since he contacted me that night, but I'm actually okay with that too. Um, had this been like when I initially got out on the scene and the bullshit that I went through emotionally with um, T, it would have been like emotional ups and downs. Um, I had a day of just feeling emotional just because um, he was allowing me to crunch on him and so it was something that I wasn't used to, it's not something that I allowed myself to do. He was just being supportive and being what a friend should be. Um, and since I'm not really used to that, oh my God, since I'm not really used to that, it was something that I had to really just look at it. I looked at everything, all the situation, the whole situation for what it is. And it just is what it is at this point. I realize that I kind of maneuver, like, move, like, I don't really, I don't have very many feelings towards people anymore. Like, that part of me is just shut off. Like I said, when I first got on the scene and everything, it was just so emotional for me. I was having a hard time um, because I approached everything in the way that I approached my relationship, you know? Like, monogamously and since then I had changed my mind about even monogamy so it doesn't like hurt or anything like that because I don't really I'm not really invested in anyone like that it was just a very vulnerable time for me and that's why I got even the slightest bit emotional because it was emotional it was a lot of stuff going on and just allowing somebody to be there for you during that time is hard enough for me but Allowing them into my safe space was where I felt like, damn, but the, yeah. So, um, there was like an exchange that, like, he would always say that like, he's opening up to me, which he did open up to me a lot. He did speak with me a lot about his problems that he's having within his family, and I just wasn't as open. Um, even though with this situation here, the most open I got with him was in relationship to a water heater, a stove, and my guinea pig. And the hardest one was my guinea pig. And, um, you know, that day I went over there for support, you know, because it was hard. I honestly had taken five shots of Crown Royal and one of some Tennessee whiskey and a fireball. So I was pretty on one not like emotionally or anything like y'all have seen me emotional y'all have seen me emotional so it wasn't like that at all i went over there and i was just affectionate i would say mostly affectionate and that was it but um it wasn't like I was over there crying. I really didn't. I mean, he asked me questions about Lenny and stuff like that. I just kept it short and sweet, didn't get emotional. And um, 
yeah that's how that went as far as the other things that happened during that time i don't know like i want to speak on it but i want a free platform to do so because i just feel like here i don't know you can't fucking cuss here after 15 seconds or some bullshit like that and i'm like it's weird because i was looking at there's a youtuber called the comment section if you guys are a little bit more on the conservative side you might like her but um, she was speaking about YouTube Kids and the filth and disgusting stuff that's on YouTube Kids. But I can't say shit, fuck, damn, suck this, that, or the third within 15 seconds. So very confused about the dynamic with YouTube as far as its um, policies, you know. But um, I probably would just keep this off the platform. I have to take it somewhere else because I just feel like, you know where i'm heading as far as content goes is probably not as much mental health mondays but more rough rugged and raw with my emotions and so i just feel like it deserves a platform that won't censor it um i come on here and i do miss mental health mondays and i do miss doing those and everything like that but it's just, I don't feel like I can be authentically all the way myself, you know, and I don't know, like, I want to speak on real things that are going on and they're not necessarily YouTube friendly, so, I don't know, I don't know where I'm heading, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know, direction is a thing that I just haven't established yet, but I feel ten times better, I got up, I worked out, you know, and I took a shower, because I mean, yesterday was rough and so and all that did help I went to my PDF my self-help like thing and I started putting in what I prioritize for my my self-love stuff you know I said self-help but it was self-love but it's all intertwined um but I ended up putting in what I deem as a priority for my self-love and the things and then they ask you for an affirmation which I really wanted to get into affirming myself every day again and um, just getting back into kind of a routine for myself because I've been out of whack since I switched my schedule and it's been a while it's been six months or so since I switched my schedule or wait when my friend leave she left in September so maybe October I switched my schedule if she left in September maybe it was September I switched my schedule I don't know um sounds shady as fuck but um I did I told her I mean I let her know like hey I'm looking to fill your spot with my schedule um and so I told her I was going for the 10 hours I was going for the 10 hours before I um before she left so she already knew that but that spot came available but honestly it wasn't hers because hers was Tuesday Wednesday Thursday off and mine is uh, Wednesday Thursday Friday but I'm looking to switch my schedule again to have a weekend day off so I can get out in the streets like people invite me out and I can't really like vibe with the scheduling a lot of times like they're they have like grown schedules I have a retailer schedule so like I have I don't have weekends off and so it's hard to link so I just at least want like Saturday off that way I could go out on Friday nights you know it does take away 5% of my pay though so there's that but I guess it just is what it is at this point I'm not I'm just not here for the shit anymore I just want to I want to have my time I want to have me time I've just felt like for the last however many months I thought having three days off was gonna be better but honestly when I just had the two days off and I worked early my life was so much better it was so much freer and that's weird to think like you know but it didn't feel like it was monopolizing so much of my time even though it ends up essentially being the same amount of time with one less day but it just feels like it monopolizes so much of my time the first day I'm completely spent I'm tired I just want to sleep and um, the next day I use for cleaning and then the next day I'm resting up for the next day for work so it's kind of like I don't know I don't really enjoy myself like I should I'm going to I'm gonna be getting off early on Tuesday because we have some sort of event and then I just took the rest of the day off and it was approved for once because these hoes like I had to do my March stuff early which I'm glad I did and um for that trip and then 
yeah I, I don't know what i'm gonna do for may i spoke to anna and she was like are you gonna come out for your birthday so my birthday is like the start of memorial weekend which is considered a blackout date so i'd have to do it like probably the week before my birthday go out there but i'm down i'm down to get out i need to like get out of dodge i need to i need to start like claiming my life back i just <coughs> excuse me allowed work to just take over a lot of my schedule and i just kind of miss my old job and like my freedoms and stuff like that and i'm getting to the point now where i'm about to pivot into having more freedom over my schedule i just have to set things up and you can't leave one situation until you fix the, the first one so once i get it all set up in the way that i want it to be then i'm definitely going to pivot into um creating my schedule um, the way that I want to and not work for somebody else you know because that shit is kind of crazy how much of your life is in their hands like they can approve whether or not you can get that day off or not and I was like damn like I forgot about all this shit I was not in the workforce forever so I forgot about having to ask permission to shit and eat and sleep and burp and whatever the fuck so I'm kind of like yeah it'd be better just be uh, I can't say that probably so never mind <laughs> anyways um, I did want to touch on a little bit of the mental health stuff um, because I did make a video not that long ago on Twitch. Um, I don't know if you guys know him. He was a dancer and uh, he worked with Ellen. I didn't know him before um, his untimely passing. <clears throat> but I did want to speak on it because it's something that has been staying in the back of my mind since it happened. And also because around that time my ex was pretty much threatening the same thing. Um, so... I don't know for those of you that didn't know there was a, a man named twitch I think twitch boss and he went a mile away from his home where him and his wife his beautiful beautiful family was and he ended up um, leaving by his own choice so I just want to like touch on really quickly what everybody says like Robin Williams and and everybody like you see people with these smiles and they look happy and everybody looks happy but you know I thought about it and I had been thinking about it even before Twitch was was am I the toxic one like am I toxic because I mean if you think about it people that everyone deems as miserable they're like oh they're so miserable debbie downer blah 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 but they're living in their truth they're speaking their truth they're expressing their truth when it comes to their emotions and whereas me i'm fine 24 7 but I, internally i am anything but sometimes so i was thinking about the inauthentic no, oh, I can't say the word. Like sometimes, in <laughs> I can't say it right now. But anyways, not being authentic with how my emotions are sometimes. Even with my children, I will say I'm fine. Lately, they've seen the truth because it was just overwhelming. I couldn't even hide it. I wasn't even very good at hiding how I was feeling. But like, just thinking about how, even like talking to my daughter, we went on a walk. Um, I believe it was the day after Lenny's passing and um, we're talking and I was asking her about her brother and her brother's emotions and how she felt about it and I was like I feel like he just acts like he's fine a lot and he's not fine like he's probably stressed he's probably feeling away and he doesn't say anything and she's like oh so he's you and I thought about it and I never properly taught my kids to really express emotions now we express feelings we talk we we did all that stuff when they needed to talk but as far as seeing me process through emotions normally they didn't see it i hid a lot of things from them emotionally well especially in the marriage i, I hid so much from them i hid i made it like this happy place that was not happy and i always acted as if everything was fine so 
in turn that taught my kids to act like everything was fine you know so I never really taught them to fully process everything I, I if anything taught them to shove it down um, it was kind of crazy to have your child kind of reflect on you and say like you and you're like excuse me but no truer words were spoken um, it just came back to thinking like we go through all these emotions as people that hide how we feel to because it feels like an inconvenience I talked to Mr. Incredible for like an hour and a half on Wednesday I want to say and he I was like hey you know I'm here you know you, I, I got you if you need to talk because like he's a single dad he would be going through stuff you know uh, he's an Austin I always gotta say it like him because he says it's so cute Austin and um, you know he's been going through a lot as a FedEx driver and living in that area where like things have been essentially shut down for a while like he he essentially had been going through a lot and stressing and stuff so I was like hey you know I got you I'm here and he was like I don't want to bother you I don't want to inconvenience you and I think the same way I don't want to be a burden I don't want to inconvenience people and it's crazy to think your feelings that you have seem like a burden to other people but honestly if you answer anything other than fine it feels like that it feels like you are inconveniencing people like you are not going with the status quo you're you're going against what people expect of you when you're not fine and it sucks that you can't be authentic with people there's like somebody stopping right here on what the fuck why bitch what the fuck Maybe they're like thinking I'm recording them. Bitch, I'm not looking at you. Anyways, so I um, I think it's just odd that we feel that way just to express our normal feelings and what we're thinking and displaying our emotions and stuff like that is an inconvenience to other. And I feel some type of way about that, like listening to it because I myself always say, I don't wanna be a burden, I don't wanna be a burden, I don't wanna be a burden. When I feel anything other than fine, I'm a hermit. I will go in, I will shut out the world because if I'm not fine, it feels like an inconvenience. It goes on to be like something that I heard in the um, Netflix original, You and i don't know how many people pay attention to lines and shows but i this one stuck out for me and um i had binge watched it because my back went out um and it was 40 talking to what's his name joe at that point <laughs> i don't know if his name is joe but we're just gonna say anyways so it was 40 talking to joe and he's like who bakes for the baker and his sister love was a baker on the show and she baked and that was how she showed her love to other people was baking but his question really stuck out to me like who does bake for the fucking baker who shows that kind of love to people that give love me i love people to the core of my heart and when i withdraw i don't like people to take it offensively as if i don't want to talk to them and people that know me will know like I must be going through something you know they they could feel or they can tell or they just know me well enough to know that I'm going through something but <clears throat> it's kind of crazy because you think about the leaps and bounds of things that people do to bring joy to other people's lives but the question is who bakes for the baker and that's like who brings joy to your life when you're going through it in your darkest moments, who's there for you the way you're there for them? And that sentence stuck out for me. It made me reevaluate a lot of relationships. I ended up not talking to my cousin anymore because I realized that he spent a lot of time backhanded commenting me. And I had a friend that did the same thing, backhanded commenting like all the time. He would comment on my parenting, all kinds of shit about me and I, I don't know. Kimana refers to me as crunchy mom. 
but I just feel like I wanted them to always have the freedom to express themselves. When they were younger, I did allow for them to curse around 14 or whatever. As long as they weren't directing it at people, it was fine with me. If they weren't calling their grandma a bitch or something, it was fine. Say, oh shit, damn, fuck, whatever. And they typically, it was a shit in the damn, but my son never really cursed. Um, so... I, I really didn't care about that stuff. That stuff is minor to me in the grand scheme of how, whether or not you're raising a good person or not. So that's minor. And he would just be like, I would never let my kids do this or that. And I'm like, okay, well, these are mine. Them are my kids. Come to find out, he had a whole shit show going on over there. But I didn't judge him because no matter what you do as a parent, sometimes it just doesn't go out the way that you plan. Sometimes, like, you can be the what you deem as the best parent and giving your kids everything, but it just doesn't work out in the way that you want it to be. And I feel like that's fine. It's not your fault. This is, you know what I mean? Like, oh, obviously as parents you're going to take that on, but it doesn't mean that you're a shit-ass parent. It just means that they might have taken a different path than what was presented to them and that's it I just want to make sure that my kids know that they're loved feel loved feel good about themselves and are good to other people and to me that is good you know that's that's good for me I want them to be what they deem successful not me I'm not gonna put the pressure on them to create what I feel is their future but yeah he had all kinds of backhanded comments for me and I was just like yeah I don't want to I don't want to go through this anymore I don't want to do this anymore because it's not something that you do to a family member and I didn't like his wife like I, I totally don't I don't like his wife so uh, my cousin was basically my other cousin was like I was around them and it was a shit show and I was like and he had a, like, a lot to say about me and my kids a lot to say about a lot of situations and I just was like I'm gonna cut it off because I tried to talk to him on two separate occasions with regard to something that I felt like he should be taking ownership for no he basically pushed it off on my child and then from there I was like all right fuck it you know what I mean like I'm good I, I gave him a lot more chances than I would give other people because he was my family I gave him a lot more chances because he was considered like my brother growing up but you know what I mean everybody with the blood is thicker than water bullshit like <laughs> nah. it's just not for me anymore that's just something that is said and honesty it's not something that I feel like holds true because I feel like your family will stab you in the back quicker than some my friends would with reference to my friend quote unquote um, yeah no <laughs> the, the same situation backhanded comments and this friend was on drugs all kinds of stuff I did not judge her for any of that stuff like you know make backhanded comments to people and then like be like yeah it's cool it's straight it just wasn't straight anymore and like I said I have a hard time breaking it off with friends with family so I just typically would be like yeah I'm not gonna talk to them anymore but in this situation here with 2023 I want to be able to speak that truth and say like listen this relationship is not good for me it doesn't serve it doesn't hold any purpose for me and it's hurtful so I just want to break this off and that's what I did with the principal is like you know um I just had to let it be known that it's just not healthy for me it wasn't healthy for him either like if we're gonna trigger each other it's not healthy and I don't know I just want to know at the end of the day though who bakes for the baker I hope you guys are all being nourished in the way that you feel like you need nourishment and you're getting love and receiving love the way that you need it and you're able to communicate with those around you whether it be your significant other whether it be your friends whether it be your family in the way that you need to because like these are like since the start of COVID mental health has been kind of pushed to the back burner back burner but also brought to the forefront at the same time so it's not something that has been heavily focused on but people are looking taking a deeper look into it now and 
I just feel like, you know, I wish that in healthcare, it wasn't $150 to get that. I wish that people had access to care when they needed to. I, I wish that you're able to really get through on a crisis line and get the love and, and get, you know, the support that you need. It made me reevaluate a lot of things. It made me decide that I wanted to go back to school to finish up my um, second degree and go into what I was really originally passionate about. My therapist told me I should do it. Plenty of people in my life told me I should do it, and I just haven't done it. Um, so I'm definitely going to. They really fucking just stood there forever. Now they're finally leaving what the fuck that was about sorry you guys i hate drop f-bombs like now that's kind of rude to say <laughs> but his windows are so fucking um dark i can't even see what they were doing at this point they could have been recording me too but i wasn't recording them but the i've seen this motherfucker before um he slows down when i'd be walking the streets sound like i would be walking the streets <laughs> might be better than my job make my own hours and <laughs> yeah but I just want to make sure everybody's getting all the love and support that y'all deserve because life isn't easy and going through it with people that make you feel like shit is not cool you know um I've learned through my separation and everything that there are things that are just worse than 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 financial ruins it's being made to feel like you ain't nothing like you ain't shit and that is a feeling that i want to leave behind i'm easy it's quicker for me to just disassociate with people now like i just i don't have the energy in me to try to fix a lot of things like i did before in the past i would work so hard on mending relationships mending friendships and it just didn't serve any purpose to me all it did was show that I could bust my ass to fix things but the other person won't give me the same energy you know what I mean and for any of you guys that feel like I have ghosted you in particular I'm speaking to Anna in case she does watch it like it wasn't you at all it hasn't been you at all it's just been honestly a lot of shit's been going on and you don't I don't know how to process my feelings correctly with other people um <sighs> If anyone notices when I do go through stuff, I will focus the conversation on the other person because I just feel like I can't handle speaking on my own stuff. I don't want to get emotional. I don't know why I'm okay with doing it on here, but just not with people. I don't know. I'm once 